Okay. Thank you. All right. I click record, so. Okay, here we go. So welcome to, of course, an honors production where we, we have the great pleasure of interviewing fascinating people, most of whom are faculty in the honors program at Temple University. I'm Ruth Lost, I'm the director and I'm Claire Adams. I'm a senior education and English major. And we're looking forward to a conversation today with David Bromley, who's been teaching honors for a few years, and students have really enjoyed his course. Claire, for example, has taken his class, so we have an authentic student here to talk about it. Uh, the course is entitled Sociocultural Foundations of Education in the United States, but the course is really incredibly cool. And so we thought, as are you, David, so we thought could you tell us a little bit about your own background, maybe your, your college major, uh, and sort of how you rolled into this career, which you will tell us a little bit about. Yeah, good morning, and thanks for having me on. This is very cool. Um, I'm the executive director of Big Picture Philadelphia. We're a, obviously a Philadelphia-based nonprofit. Uh, we're part of a national network of, of progressive student-centered schools called Big Picture Learning that started in the 90s. Uh, we operate two high schools in Philadelphia, very much in partnership with the public schools in partnership with a school district called El Centro and Vox Big Picture High School. Um, I got into this, um, I think I probably would have been the last person in my high school class that ever would have been a teacher. Um, and I definitely would have been pretty close to the last person in my college class to ever be a teacher. Um, I was a history major, although I was really, my passion was acting, and I graduated from uh, school in Los Angeles and went right into uh, the film industry and, and did that for a bunch of years. And then I just had a passion for trying to understand the inequities in this country. I think one of the, something that we really emphasize to students is you, you just have to keep at what it is that you love. and. And if you find something new to love, then it's all right to make a change, and especially if it's your major or your career path, and just to do it, and not right. be afraid of doing it. I mean, you started out in film and history, and now you're doing this. And so it's it, you know, this idea that there's a one linear, simple path is just so naive. And we don't ever want, we want our students to know they shouldn't restrict themselves to that kind of thinking anyway. And so your life kind of exemplifies, you know, that that um, that exact path. Yeah, especially. I mean, I took your class and I think as the class go on, we learned more about like your history, but I don't think I knew exactly every single step you took until just now. But I think it even sends home what I interpreted more that the dynamic that we had in that classroom from teacher or professor to student, like there was no like authority. I mean, there was, there was discipline and there was the challenging moments and like you pushed us to be the best, but I never felt like you were towering over us. Like you trusted us as intellectuals and as academics to guide the class, to teach the class. And I think that's, especially, I think I was, I was a sophomore. It was like one of my first upper level classes. I was like caught off guard, but like so excited by it. So I think if that's anything to like sell this class is that you get to become the professor, the researcher, the scholar, everything, the teacher, um, it's just, it was great. And I think also knowing that you were in film or in history and all these other steps, I think helps that the fact that this class is so multifaceted in students. I mean, this was one of my education requirements. So I went into this class thinking, okay, I'm gonna have the usual crowd, the usual kids, people I'm always seeing. And I knew nobody in the class. They were majors across the board. And I think that was like the best part of this class is that I, despite being an education major, I was out of my comfort zone. Um, so I think that's more reason for other honor students to take it too, is that it's education, but it's just everything under the sun and you learn everything, which tells more about education too. But it's, it's just so powerful through that. I love it. Thank you for that. Yeah. That, that uh, obviously warms my heart to know that you had that kind of experience because that's, um, that's certainly my goal. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I don't believe education is the top down. I think expo education is about exploration. And I think education, to your point, Ruth, is about finding 
uh, figuring out what questions that are burning inside you and then figuring out how to answer them and, and, and going after it. And if there's, to me, there's no sign greater than uh, success in education when people are trying to answer questions. I don't even think it's figuring out all the answers as much as just figuring out the right questions and, and, and developing that passion and the lights going on. And, and as we know in education, those are the things that really help grow somebody's mind. Uh, and heart. And so I'm glad you had that experience. The schools that we started really are about doing that for all kids starting in ninth grade in high school. And it's, it's about helping them find out what makes them tick, what they need, and getting really honest with themselves. Um, um, basically, we just cheated and stole all John Dewey's writing a long time ago, and are trying to implement everything he wrote about a long time ago. And that's actually how we start the class by reading a piece of John Dewey. Um, and so that is a goal for this class. I, I want the kind of the signature project of the class is asking the students to choose any, it doesn't matter what the topic is, what the issue is. Uh, they have to write a short proposal describing what the topic is and why they're interested in it and what resources initially they could go after. Uh, and then frankly, I want to help the students uh, also interact with adults in the Philadelphia region who might help answer some of those questions. And so that's part of the class and what I aim to do as well. And that's certainly been for me the most meaningful part is watching the students develop some really cool projects, really thoughtful, interesting work. I, I like the idea of bringing more people into the conversation. Totally. I think if anything good goes on in honors classes, it's that the conversation really takes off and goes in directions that Certainly when I'm teaching the class, I had no idea because, because of the energy and the vitality and the interest of the people in the class. And, and you, you find yourself thinking, I know, this is my favorite thing for me when I'm teaching is when someone says something, I think, oh, I've never thought of that. That's so cool. And then you feel like you, something good has happened in your class when you actually think, oh, my, oh wow, that is revelatory. And it sort of gives you a you know, makes your hair stand on end. It's, it's, a, it's a great moment. Um, I do think, um, you know, when I'm thinking about people who are politicians or who want to run for school board at the very least, that to kind of, uh, to take a class like yours, to, to think more broadly about what it means to be educated and what the stakes are in education is just so, it's so undervalued and it's so important, um, especially now. I mean, I think, um, you know, what kinds of conversations are you having about uh the situation now, the what seems like the ever increasing disparity between yeah. haves and have nots with with education with COVID, the COVID situation. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's really hard. It's really, really hard. And um, but uh, COVID is in my mind. This the whole shutdown is. It's if if it's doing anything, hopefully at least it's uh, bringing to light what most of us that work work within this system know already um, that the inequities are, are, uh, are, are de I mean, it's deplorable. Uh, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing that we live in a state that has the highest educational inequities and in spending in the country and in, in the nation that has the highest uh, uh, degree of inequity uh, in spending amongst the developed world. So we're really in the heart of it. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the poor areas, underserved areas of the state are kind of the poster children right now around the world for developed nations and what we're doing, frankly, wrong. Uh, and having said that, so it can be, it can be a bummer. And um, there's a lot of the stuff we talk about and we go in the class that, frankly, I, I, I just want to be real. Like, we don't have any answers right now. There's not a clear pathway for any of this. And that's why one of the reasons I love this class in the Honors College is just to echo what you all have been saying is, is because there are communications majors and science majors and business majors and, and obviously education majors. Um, but it's not about being wanting to be a teacher necessarily. It's about taking this information and how do you use it in your day to day life and how's that going to inform you as a citizen, potentially as a parent. Um, and in making these decisions and thinking hard about the decisions you're going to have to make uh, now, but especially as you get forward as an adult, um, as a taxpayer, uh, as a parent potentially. Um, so uh, we are, um, 
I don't have a good answer to that question, Ruth. Well, I, I don't know how you could. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Like, I, I um, you know, we're, we're pouring in on relationships. Um, that's the biggest thing I think we can do right now. Where we're just pouring in on relationships. And can so... Say more, say more what you mean by that? Yeah, so um, we are prioritizing. Well, for starters, just so you know, I asked all the, the leadership teams of both schools, I was like, you know, they wanted to have everything planned by May. And I was like, well, we'll slow your roll on that one. Like, <laughs> like we, 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 know, we know less than we, we don't know uh, about this. And so, um, so I've been bringing in um, all kinds of different folks that have, you know, that we think have, might bring some expertise and wisdom and knowledge to our work. And we've been holding these Zoom calls with them and kind of uh, charrettes in some ways asking the leadership team to share their ideas with these folks and giving them feedback and asking these experts from the outside to give us feedback and, and really tell it, be honest, tell us, we don't know what we're doing. Um, frankly, no one knows what they're doing. And even cyber education is pretty, has been pretty abysmal. And so uh, for, for a lot of kids. And um, so we're kind of unpacking this and figuring out, and I think we're landing on a spot where it seems pretty obvious that if we do have the opportunity to meet with our students face to face, which everybody wants um, this fall, then those moments are really going to be spent on developing relationships mm -hmm. and getting kids excited and about uh, about life and about getting them to know and develop those relationships with the the adults and get them to develop those relationships with each other. That frankly, that's what's going to sustain the kids through these hard moments. Uh, when they, because we're not going to be in school all day, five days a week, and might I doubt that we will be in school at all, frankly. And um, but if we can, it's going to be all about that. And and um, so we're teaching our teachers right now how to develop complex, thoughtful videos, bringing in like all kinds of bells and whistles to make this as interesting and engaging as possible. And we're also still a big part of our work that we do with kids is. Um, and this aligns with what we've already talked about is we ask students to pursue their interests and passions in the real world. Uh, and they do that by uh, spending time figuring out what those are and, and doing informational interviews with adults that share those interests and passions. And then, and then starting real world internships uh, as early as 10th grade, uh, two days a week. So we're actually going to do virtual internships as well. Um, and the students are going to have an opportunity. It's going to be way scaled back, but they're still, still going to have to do research and develop a project um, with, um, you know, with these mentors in the Philadelphia region that share an interest or passion of theirs. I think, I think um, norms are going to have to be really, really important. I think, and then at the end of, I, I think like the early sessions, like, because this is a long class, uh, the early sessions, there's going to have to be times in the session where we stop and there's actually somebody and, and it's a rotating position where one of the students' responsibilities is being the norm person. And, and, and actually, these are the norms that we agreed upon. And one's definitely got to be, you know, like be mindful of your how much time you're taking. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want them to call me out on that. Like, so I want, I want a normer and, and the rotating thing where every student goes, okay, I think we did well on this. I think we did, maybe we need to work better on this and really challenge ourselves to use the time and space in a reflective way. And, and obviously the level of education, even doing that is good. Like, so, um, and those are best practices in a classroom anyway. Yeah, uh, but still to, to, this will really highlight those kinds of needs. Yeah. 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 Sarah, what do you think is going to be needed? I, the, thinking, I know, thinking back to my classes, like, well, it was interesting that most of my classes that transitioned to online, very few of them did Zoom, which obviously I think they had the best intention at heart where they were like, we know our schedules are going to change and we don't want to like commit you to this time anymore. But I, I missed that like dynamic. Um, and I think, the best class that I had over Zoom was the one that utilizes all facets of Zoom. So she always recorded every Zoom meeting, sent us the transcripts of the chats, sent us like the videos and the audios. So it really allowed us to kind of 
I think it's hard sometimes to digest right here in technology because I think there's just like a disconnect um, despite being literal connection. Um, but I think allowing you to take the time after the class to really digest the information, I think was the most beneficial. Um, and I think what you're saying with having like a little bit of a debrief every class about what we're doing, are we doing it right? I think is gonna be the most powerful um, because I think, especially as like you're getting to know a class over Zoom, you're getting to know students, having that moment for a student to be like, hey, I'm this type of learner. I really appreciate this chat side conversation because I think since you're not in a classroom, you're not gonna be able to notice, especially as a professor, like what type of attention span students have because there might be a student that has their camera off the whole time or something like that. So having the, those debriefs, I think you've got the ticket. I think that's gonna be the most beneficial thing that you're gonna have. I, I really love this idea. I'm, I've been um, laboring over a faculty handbook for honors and I've, it's tormented me, and especially since I finished it more or less before all this started. And now I've, I'm re reading it and thinking, whoa, this is just so dated <laughs> because mm. it was last March that I finished it. And I'm just thinking about this idea of debriefing at the end of the, I think I hadn't thought about that. that is really yeah. great idea. How, how do you imagine that would be done? Just you have some. I think, I think I think the first session that we will um, we will co-create the norms, um, and and um, you know, like with anything, and there's the balance of things that I'm I'm going to really want to see and push, uh, and if I do that too hard, then the norms are are mine. So I really want the students to take ownership of the norms, or else they're going to be just something, uh, and then. And we're going to go through a process of how we're going to use them. So um, I, I foresee that there's somebody looking and paying attention to the chat. Like, are the questions that we're missing? You know, uh, I want somebody to pay attention to, like, amount, like, who, are, how are we doing with airtime? I think that's going to be the huge one, like I already mentioned. Um, I want somebody to give me like about process feedback, like, is this clear enough? Um, and frankly, I, I, I want people to tell me at the end of the class whether it's worthwhile. So mm -hmm. it's like, so I, 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 I think there's a lot to, I've, I haven't thought through all the specifics yet. And, and frankly, the advantage of being in a room with 16 other, 17, 18 other people and, and thinking through, I know we'll come up with all the norms that, that are relevant. I think there's going to be needing to do something, um, especially at the college level, of, of getting students to reflect on the Zoom experience like, I, like we've just talked about and getting them to share norms that would make the experience better. But I also think there's going to be a need for both uh, professor and for students to almost like have their own. I mean, we do this in our schools, but in, with a slightly different goal. But I think everybody could have their own learning plan. Yeah. So, you know, what are the sort of kind of what are the behaviors and that, you know, during this downtime, virtual time uh, that students have done that they know are detrimental to their learning. And like, you know, I think there should be a conversation about that. The first or maybe second class, maybe that's a little heavy first class, but second class, like, you know, you know what in the spring and so far this semester, what's worked for you and what hasn't and but part of it is you guys got to take ownership too. So, um, Claire, is there anything else that you wanted to ask David about? I guess I'm just definitely curious about how, as a teacher and a professor, how you're going to support students kind of finding their rhythm again. It's clear that you've really like have been preparing. Like, is there something that you're going to do to help students like kind of find their rhythm again or a new rhythm? Yeah, I, I think that last part of your question is right. I think it's got to be a new rhythm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think expectations are going to change. Yeah. Um, I think they have to change. So, David, I, my, I think uh, Claire and I both really want to see every single student in honors take your class. Yes. <laughs> that, would be my, that would be my wish to just weigh, weigh these questions. What were some of your favorite questions, Claire? I think learning about how you're translating like the big picture things into this class 
I think that's like, because that's something I knew implicitly from taking the class, but knowing that it was intentional, I mm-hmm. think is really, really powerful and really great. Big picture meaning? The big picture Philadelphia, like what he does with the box and mm-hmm. El Centro. Mm-hmm. I, think. I was thinking more big picture, actually, the sort of global issues that education <laughs> always engages. I mean, that the big, biggest picture you know, of the issues of disparity and social justice and all the things yeah. we care about and honors, uh, try to solve those try to at least know those questions are important to solve and do our best to solve them. Mm-hmm. Anyway, thank you for being one of our problem solvers, David, or problem, problem raisers, maybe I should say. More <laughs> uh, well, it's I, a I pleasure think, seeing you both. Yeah, uh, it's really a pleasure. Glad we yeah. caught it came in before the storm hit. Is it, your sky is <laughs> pretty gray there. I, know, I think I'm about to get wet. <laughs> <laughs> that computer inside. Thank you so much. We're looking forward Take to care. fall. Thanks yeah. so much. Take care. Good to see you both. Bye bye. Bye.